New York State stands among the most divided and dysfunctional states in the entire country. The North-South, rural-urban, Republican-Democrat divide within the state is immense, and national politics are only driving these two halves further apart, to the point that what little common ground exists between these two halves is rapidly eroding. Southern New York, as most of us know, is extremely urban. The New York metropolitan area is the largest urban landmass in the world, as a matter of fact. This is, of course, where New York City lies, and it is within the five boroughs of that city that almost half of the state's entire population lives. As you might imagine, it doesn't take much more of the rest of the state to throw elections in whichever direction the city would like, and various other cities such as Albany and Buffalo are more than happy to oblige, many of their own citizens and politicians having history in New York City themselves. The political dominance of the city would not be so great an issue if the rest of the state stood largely in line with its urban counterparts, or benefited from them despite political disagreements, but that's not the case. Downstate policy favors the downstate lifestyle and economy, an urban lifestyle and economy. New York City and its metropolitan peripheries have Wall Street, the Port of New York and New Jersey, Silicon Alley, and stand as the media capital of the world, dominating in sheer quantity of literature, music, television, and film companies headquartered there. Finance, trade, tech, and media. These are the chief industries of the downstate economy, and the downstate government aims to reinforce and expand these industries as it rightfully should in pursuit of its own best interests. That is, if it was all New York was. But there is another half to the story. A contrasting half. Upstate New York, rather than having a large service-based economy, survives and thrives through the use of natural resources. It has an abundance of water power, agriculture, mineral resources, and once, not so long ago, boasted one of the highest manufacturing outputs in the country, standing alongside giants like Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. The loss of manufacturing at the national level to foreign competitors hurt all these states, creating what today is known as the Rust Belt. Unlike most of these states, however, upstate New York finds itself especially restricted in how it can respond to the loss of this vital industry and the jobs it provided. Adapting to new opportunities or tapping into old capabilities has been virtually brought to a halt by the contrasting agenda of the South and the overwhelming authority it holds over nearly every institution of power in the state. Downstate policies have imposed restrictions and regulations upon resource extraction based upon environmental concerns have forced the smaller businesses of the North to abide by high and expensive standards only practical in well-off cities. Standards which make starting or maintaining a business in the North extremely difficult and thus unattractive to aspiring entrepreneurs and well-established businesses alike. We've seen across the state the imposition of high taxes and excessive mandates, whose end results by and large only benefit high population areas, while disadvantaging the rural North. And it should also be added that because of New York State's especially bureaucratic nature, Several of these urban-led regulations, an estimated 2,000 in number, are terribly outdated. Further, the majority of investment in the North by the Southern-dominated state is poorly allocated or limited in its abilities, only offering temporary relief to a condition that requires a long-term solution. In the last decade, 90% of the state's private sector economic growth has been concentrated in the very southern tip of the downstate region. Plainly, the downstate economic model is crippling upstate's economy. This has led some to flee the state for better prospects in Pennsylvania, New England, and even further away. But for those who remain, they need not look far to see their homes in decay. Broken roads. Half of all bridges in the state evaluated as being in mediocre condition. One of the highest concentrations of lead piping still in use across the entire country. Abandoned houses, abandoned businesses. It's no wonder that resentment has grown as high as it has in the north. Practices that may function very well in a city do not produce the same results in several distinct rural counties that demand and in fact depend upon policies of their own to survive. While downstate may presently revel in its political dominance, the neglect of northern needs will on a long enough timeline spell disaster for downstate New York. As business prospects in the north dry up, so too will standards of living in the north drop as poverty rises. In such a future, infrastructure, even if regularly repaired, could be expected to crumble or face vandalism at a higher rate. Social services will almost certainly be overwhelmed, especially since these poor communities will begin paying far fewer taxes than they currently do, and will require more government aid. Crime will become more widespread, and outright hatred for the downstate population will be sown. The impoverished North would fully become the responsibility of the city, and downstate investment in the North would skyrocket out of sheer necessity to maintain essential aqueducts, power grids, and transit routes between NYC and the other major cities which themselves would suffer more directly the effects of an impoverished upstate. Already, northern New York takes in billions more in state funding annually than it provides, though much of that does end up going to the northern cities. But that number is only likely to rise with time as conditions in the north decline, 
which means higher taxes in the city with less local improvements to show for it. Even supposing that the North remain exactly as it is and not spiral further into decline, those billions of tax dollars continue to be siphoned away from downstate projects, but because of how state policy allocates funds in favor of urban areas and urban style improvements regardless of whether it's upstate or downstate, the communities that need that funding the most don't receive enough of it, essentially putting it to waste. There's no denying the culture of northern New York and southern New York are very distinct, especially for a state. We can do away with the political and economic divide and we'd still find two entities existing in competition for control of the state. It is in the best long-term interest of both upstate and downstate New York to either go their own ways through a state partition or to devolve the New York state government and create two or more autonomous entities within the borders of the existing state. This latter option is far more likely to be achieved as a state partition is a lengthy process that would require majority bipartisan support both within the state legislature and from Congress at the federal level. This alternative of devolving the New York government to allow for home rule by a northern government upstate and a southern government downstate without altering New York's borders would be an entirely state-level matter. Though that being said, the New York state government has proven especially resistant to such discussions, refusing to so much as authorize a survey to determine the favorability of a partition or reorganization within the state. Regardless, something needs to change for the state before it eventually finds itself in a circumstance highly unfavorable to both parties. The US of Z thanks you for watching, support your legion by liking the video, or join our ranks by subscribing for more. Mr. Z, out.